Make some noise. Hadidi, Hadidi. We've got five storytellers today. All of them are women. And all of them are sharing different facets of what it means to grow up and to be strong as a woman. And so the first one, to embrace the stage, is a dynamic lady. The first time I saw her or met her, I just realized that she's strong. And then I knew a brother, and the brother says, that's the strongest sister I have. I'm like, you don't say. <laughs> Um, she's an independent art curator and an art enthusiast. And you know what? You think she's here to tell us about art, but she's here to tell us today about how to train a bully, how to fight a bully, and how to kill a bully. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Mbali Chabalala. said my name is Mbali. Um, I like saying that a lot because I was very shy when I was growing up and um, I couldn't introduce myself to people. Um, now that I've actually come out of my shell, I like saying that. Hi everyone, my name is Mbali Chabalala. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so the shyness in me actually speaks to what I'm tr the story of today and the notions of um, going through the motions with bullies and um, Come to think of it, I've had a series of bullies all throughout my life. Because when you're shy, you happen to be the target for a lot of a lot of bullies. Yeah, you become prey, the easy target. Yeah, the one who's lurking in the background that they always find, even though you think you're in the shadows. Um, so, and I, I think the best way to start this would be with just thinking around my my brothers, Piwe. Um, I have three brothers. And um, the brother that I follow right behind, he and I we used to fight a lot, literally about everything. We fought about the toys, about the remotes, about the bath, about the shower, about lit just about anything, about his friends, about my friends. Um, and, and it only turned out that, you know, we fought so much because he was actually, you know, training to protect me later somehow. Um, and um, I realized this when, um, when I was growing up and when you think about training a bully, the idea is that a bully somehow feels unstoppable. There's something about them that is so overpowering, that is overwhelming and makes them feel like a mammoth um, that you can't um, stop to an extent. And um, my brother happened to be the ideal subject or the person to actually come into the gap when it came to speaking to my Goliaths, in a sense, um, for a while, while I was still figuring out this whole thing. Um, so I remember there's this particular, this particular um, bully by the name of Poncho. And um, Poncho was a big kid, yeah? Um, but he wasn't my bully. He was my sister's bully, my baby sister, Linda. Linda was tiny. She was the scrawniest kid you've ever seen under the sun. And um, this is when I actually realized that um, a bigger person is needed in order to train a big bully. Um, so what Simpiwa would do is that he had his friend Nathan and both of them were quite the rascals, um, if you want to put it in that sense. And they would rock up after school when all the other kids in the playground were out in the streets and confront the bully. Um, and they had this tactic that they would use where they would face the bully and, and ask him a simple question. Which hand will it be? This hand, pointing at my brother's hand, or this hand, pointing at Nathan's hand. And if you were too slow to answer, you'd get both hands. Uh, <laughs> And um, so that was one way of dealing with the bully. But I think for me, some of the most instrumental ways of actually thinking around it was when I had faced my own bully face to face. And this was um, a kid that was meant to like me by some extent. Actually, was supposed to like me because we shared a surname. It wasn't my cousin. We just had a surname and we sat in the same class. And because our names were right behind each other, in the register, we literally sat on the same desk. This was Manja Chabalala. 
When Mantra Chawadala hated my guts, he didn't like me at all. In fact, he kicked me on the shin every single day at school. At every opportunity, he'd poke fingers at me and mock me. I was, after all, very ab looking. I was very tall and skinny. And I bumped into things a lot because I didn't realize that I was very tall. <laughs> and I also happened to be scruffy. So, <laughs> um, so this just went on. And um, funny enough, you know, I would go home crying, you know, um, each day. And this wouldn't be me crying at home. This would be me crying on my way to back home. So walking home, wailing in the streets, and only to arrive at the stoop, drying my eyes and walking in because I didn't want to have to report to my family that I had been beaten at school. Also, because I knew what my brother's method would be. So enters my uncle. This is also, you know, happens to me, my favorite uncle. He is by far the most intelligent man under the sun. He would always be sitting on the porch. He is my, my mother's um, younger brother, sitting there every day with his newspaper and a joint. And um, he'd always look at me from underneath his glasses and say, Chana, ten, ten him, Chana. And I'd look at him like, Next. Zap on chan. Zap, 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 zap on chan. Come here. And I walk over to my uncle and what seems to be the problem, you'd ask. And I'm like, there's this kid he hates me at school, kicks me on mission every day. And he's like, okay. But how then do you want to deal with this situation? I'm like, I don't know which takes me back to a few other lessons that I, I, I must say that I want to admit. Mandla wasn't the first bully. He happened to be the ultimate bully. Because he was supposed to be my cousin, I didn't realize that there was a fixing or a solution that I was supposed to deal with. My uncle had already taught me how to do this. It was with a girl by the name of Dineo. And what was the case with this, which was a few years before, was that Dineo happened to be the biggest girl in school. She was a girl who had been in a class ahead of us for many years and had flunked. And she was pretty much the big girl because she had breasts before everyone else had in our class. Um, and. Again, I was the target, and she would always say, Bali, don't walk here, which was very, very ironic because the tuck shop was in that direction, and there was nowhere else to walk. And every day, she would punch me if I walked past there, so I would rather have to eat my lunch somewhere in a corner. And what my uncle had said to me when it came to dealing with uh, dinero was that the easiest way to deal with a bully is to fight them. I'm thinking, Malume, like, this girl is massive, like, she's the biggest girl in class, and I can't fight Dineo. I'm so skinny, and I'm so small, and she's so big, and she's got all the friends, and everybody's standing around her. How do I do that? And it's like, you need to do it in two minutes. He <laughs> says, because you're small, and you're the underdog, she's not expecting you to fight back. You need to throw in all the blows and then walk away, but don't look back. If you look back, you look scared. It's like, I don't know, man. Okay, as I walk away. And I decided, you know what? Enough is enough. I'm going to deal with this dinero. I went to school ready the next day. I wore my tights under my skirt. I wore a t shirt under my shirt. And I was like, this is it. My uncle says it takes two minutes to win a fight. Dineo, you better be ready for this. <laughs> As I walked towards her, I could see her standing on the edge of the corridor towards the tuck shop with all the kids gathered around her. She was, after all, a very funny kid. She made fun of everyone. Rolled up my sleeves, braced myself. Here we go, here goes nothing. And before she even said anything, I pulled her head to my knee stepped on her foot and tripped her over, a stunt I learned from my brother's peewee. <laughs> I kicked her a few times while she was on the floor 
and then walked away as quickly as I could without looking back. The crowd and all the kids on the playground cheered. It was a roar. <laughs> Funny enough, Dineo never was a, a problem ever again to me. <laughs> I guess the fight that ends in two minutes is indeed a fight won. So, how then do I deal with Manja? Manja is very handsome, is liked by all the kids in the school, the girls like him too. I happen to like him too, he just happens to be my cousin, um, by some extent, even though we're not really cousins. And he hates me. We sit in the same desk and he's this problem in my life, in my existence every single day. I'm flunking, you know, I don't want to go to school, I don't want to go to school, it's a, a sensation I'm dreading each and every day. My favorite brother happens to notice that my grades are flunking, and I'm not going to mention his name because you all might know him. <laughs> and he says to me, okay, what's the issue here? So we're sitting there trying to plan out how I'm going to take up some after classes and improve my marks. And he realizes that there's something more to this than just the marks. And I break out. I'm like, there's this kid in school, he kicks me every day. And he's like, what have you tried? I'm like, I haven't really tried anything as a boy. And it's not at the age, first grade, where I could fight with the boys. He's like, he's bigger than me. And he's stronger than me. And it's not a fight I can win. And he says, but there's other ways to deal with the bully. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, words. I'm like, words? He's like, yeah, words. Words have the power to build, but they have the power to destroy. You have to decide on how you want to handle it, but you have to deal with this problem directly. And I'm like, okay, I'm listening. He's like, in most cases, a person who's a bully happens to have been bullied or is currently being bullied. Um, so you might find that his problems stem deeper than what you think. You might be an outlet for his problems at home. His mom might be in a very abusive relationship and you need to find out what is building this anger in him. Why is he using you as an outlet? I was like, okay. But what stuck on my mind was how words can destroy because I wanted to kill him. I wanted him dead. And so, for a few weeks, I sat and I plotted on how I was going to avenge myself. I sat and I watched him after school when he was being picked up, and I realized that it was never a parent when everyone else left the school with their parents. And that he was the neatest kid at school, but he was also not necessarily um, the most warmest kid. And there was this old man, this older man, who was also very scruffy looking and very scary looking, who would come collect him on some days. And somehow, I decided that I'm going to target that. I'm going to accuse him, and I'm going to make up a lot of stories, loud enough for everyone to hear, and I'm going to make sure that everyone believes it's true. How else am I going to deal with this guy? So, again, I prepare myself, Say a few mantras. This is now me dealing with mantra. Mantra, I don't even have to roll up my sleeves for you because my words are ready. So I go into class as normal, sit on my desk, and he comes walking in, gives me the evil eye just from underneath his brow, and sits right in front of me. And before he could kick me, because I know it comes, surely five minutes before we get into opening of books, every day it comes with the kick. Have you ever been kicked on the shin? It's painful, guys. <laughs> and I ask him, I'm like, Manda, what's your problem? Hmm? Now he's confused because I never speak, I only cry. I'm like, what's going on at home? Is your father beating your mom? Oh, wait, you don't have a father, do you? Is it your stepfather? Is he beating her? Why do you consistently beat me? Beating me is not going to protect your mother from getting a beating from a stranger. Mandla burst out into tears. He started crying in hysteria. The teacher walks in and finds Mandla crying. 
What's going on? Mbali. The class goes in unison. When they, no one can really say because what have I really done? I spoke, I uttered. But at that very moment, with seeing that hurt that actually overcome Mandla and how that twist happened. Mandla actually had to go through counseling for a while after that. Uh, it turned out there was something there. I discovered that although there's strength in words and the spoken word, strength doesn't come from destroying. Um, it actually comes from building. And that had been something that I actually had to live with and, and thinking around how when dealing with somebody who is a nuisance to you, um, there's other ways of dealing with them that might not destroy them. Um, in the end. So it was actually a lingering sensation that dwelled with me for many years that resulted in me actually looking for Mandla on social media. I couldn't find him on Facebook, couldn't find him on Instagram, couldn't find him on Twitter. I mean, how many Mandla Chavalalas are there? <laughs> Um, and so it's something that actually still stays with me. I actually wanted to apologize, but I never got the chance. So I wanted to share this with you. Thank you.